Hi, I'm E. I live here in Norway with some water buffaloes, a couple of dogs, a cat, some ducks and some chickens. And I make videos about what it's like to live here on the farm. Today I'm going to share with you all the stuff that I use to make these videos. But it's a little windy today, so let's move this inside the house instead. So first off, we'll start with the camera. I use a Canon M50. It's a small mirrorless camera with a flip-out screen, which is important to have since I do a lot of filming like this, and then I can see myself on the screen to check the exposure and to see if I'm in focus. This camera has great autofocus, which I couldn't live without. Uh, it's a must-have when filming yourself. My first videos I did with an iPhone and this camera. It's an Nikon D600, but it doesn't have an autofocus. So what I used to do back then was to uh, put a pizza box on a tripod and set the focus manually on the pizza box. And then I would go press record and go over and stand next to the pizza box and align my eyes next to the box. And then I would slowly push the tripod out of the frame and do my thing. And then I would go and check the footage and do it all over again. With this, I don't have to think much about it. I just flip out the screen, press record, and it automatically finds my face, so I'm good to go. It's a pretty small and light camera. Um, I like the colors it gives. Uh, the image looks good and crisp. It's easy to navigate, and I have two of them. And there's a reason for that. Uh, one is they tend to get treated a little rough. And it's not that I'm particularly reckless with it. Sometimes it just happens. Like the time I took down the duck house, you only have one chance of shooting it. And I like to have several angles uh, to a scene. So I have more to work with. So I had one camera on a tripod and one on the ground. And I also had a drone in the air. And I was waiting for the sun to set because direct sunlight isn't always the best light to shoot in. And just as the sun went down in the horizon, I started all the cameras, uh, jumped in a tractor, ready to go. When I got a visit from an old friend I hadn't seen in forever. So I greeted him and asked politely if he could wait 15 minutes so I could get this done. I had a small window of about 15 minutes before I didn't have any daylight left. So I rushed it and ran over one of the cameras with the tractor. And then you end up having a camera that looks like this. And that's when I'm happy I don't have the, the camera that I really want, which is a $6,000 camera. So I can buy 10 of these or um, these for the same price as the, the One Dream camera, especially when they end up looking like this and this. And that's also why I have two lenses. But before I get into that, I just remembered that I haven't been wearing this shirt in forever. And I just realized why. This seam is scratching my nipple and it's making it very stiff and very sore. I'm gonna go and change it and uh, wear something more comfortable. And while I do that, I'm just gonna insert a 10 second clip of uh, whatever, maybe the calf, and I'll be right back. This is the Canon 18 to 135. It's a zoom, and that means it's an okay all-round lens. I can film regular stuff with it, but I can also get closer to a subject without moving my feet. And that's especially important when working with animals, because when I'm shooting and I'm moved to get closer, you can bet your ass that they stop whatever they're doing at the moment. So that's why a zoom is a good thing to have so that I can get closer without disturbing them. The second one is a Sigma 16mm 1.4, which is a wide angle lens and the one that I'm using right now. What I like about this lens is the, the shallow depth of field you get, uh, which pretty much means a blurry background. So if you lock your eyes on the plate number behind the tractor, you see it blurs out the closer I am to the lens. And that I think looks really good and a bit more cinematic as they say, but you also get a bigger nose if you stand really close to it. It also has an f-stop uh, 1.4, which means that it'll take in more light than the other lens. And that gives me more time to shoot in the evening before it gets dark. But sometimes I don't have time to go in and grab one of the cameras and then I turn to the camera that I always wear on me and that's the phone. 
So when I find myself running a 10K on a Sunday morning after some water buffaloes that got out, the phone is always there so I at least can get some shots. Just like when you drive home one night and you meet this guy along the road. Hi, Elg. I would prefer to have the other camera here as well, but I have the phone and I have something to show you instead of just talking about it and that always wins. I also have a GoPro, uh, I think it's called Hero 5. It's starting to get pretty old now and I don't use it that much, but I use it whenever I can't fit another camera inside a place or whenever there's water involved. Then this little guy works really well, uh, even though there are uh, newer and probably a lot better ones than this, but it works for the, the little stuff I use it on. Since I'm pretty much the only camera operator here on the farm, the camera usually stands on a tripod. Uh, and to get some movements in the shot, I have this drone from DJI, the Mavic Pro 2. And that that is uh, still alive is nothing short of a small miracle, but I'm gonna dive a little deeper into that in a future video, so I'll save that for later. Also for movement without the crashing hazard, I use this glider from Edelchrome. It's probably called a slider. I don't know if it's, it slides or glides. You attach the camera and you set it to move from side to side or forwards or backwards, all controlled by an app on the phone. It's not fast moving, but you get a little action from an otherwise static frame and it can look something like this. I don't use it all the time, it takes a bit to set up, but I like to include it sometimes just for a little extra spice. And also for movement, uh, the recent addition to the setup is this uh, gimbal from Shein or Shion called the Webuild S. It's pretty much a stabilizer for the camera so you don't get that shaky footage when you're hand holding it. Here's what it looks like when I'm not using it, walking and holding the camera with my hands. And here's using the gimbal, it pretty much makes everything more stable and prevents the viewers from getting dizzy. For sound recording, I use this VideoMic Pro Plus from Rode, or Röda, uh, as I would say, as a Norwegian. It's like a gun and records sound in the direction it's pointed. But for talking, you kind of need to be as close to it as possible. And that's why you see so many shots like this when talking. talking about blue skies, talking about sunshine. You could just use the microphone on the camera, it has one built in. And then it will sound like this, patreon.com slash farmery. But I do prefer the sound that I get using this. The best thing about it though, is that it powers on when you turn the camera on uh, with my previous microphone it, and it happened more than once. Uh, I recorded for several minutes, but had forgotten to turn the microphone on. Uh, but with this, that's not gonna happen because it turns on automatically. Uh, you just need to remember to charge it once in a while. I also have this wireless microphone, uh, also from Röde, 
um, which means that I don't have to always push my face so close to the lens. You put the receiver on the camera and you can use this as is. This is the microphone. Then you place it like that or you can connect it to one of these. And I usually then hide this in my pocket and place this somewhere around my face and you're good to go. I also think that this gives a more natural perception on where sound comes from. Uh, we're so used to sound coming from the camera itself. So when I walk across the camera, your brain knows that I'm approaching, passing and leaving, even without watching it. But if I use the wireless mic, the sound is even no matter where I am to the camera. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, do 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 do. Baby shark, mommy. And that can mess with your brain a little, just like baby shark. You're welcome. For lighting, I try to do as much as possible outside and use natural light. Uh, but sometimes that's just not possible, like today, because we have a freezing wind and it makes recording sound a little bit cumbersome. So that's when I use this light from Aperture. It's a 300D Mark II, and I usually put it inside a big soft box to make the light a little softer and beautiful -ler. Earlier, I just used a work light, uh, like the one they use in construction, uh, and bounced the light into a wall, and that works as well, and looks like this. <laughs> but then I got rid of that beard and uh, got this light, and now I pretty much use it for everything that I shoot inside. So that's pretty much all the gear that I use to make these videos. I want to point out that I didn't get it all at once. It's acquired over time. And as I said, I started out with this old camera and a phone. People are using all kinds of gear to make videos. This is just what I use and isn't necessarily the right stuff for you. So if you're thinking about starting a video or a YouTube channel and don't have a lot of stuff, don't let that be an excuse to not do it. It's better to do something with what you have than doing nothing at all. And that is applicable to anything in life. So get off that couch and do that thing you've been thinking about for so long. Even if you don't have that one thing you think you need to do it, Netflix will still be there when you get back. So that's it for me. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Stay safe, be good, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodaloo.